So Bob Ray, the member of parliament from Toronto Centre and the interim leader of the Liberal Party of Canada, he wants a second job, as in a job on top of the job he has now, as in another paying job, but not just any job. He doesn't want to, you know, be a carpenter or open a bakery. He wants a political job. He wants to be a lobbyist for a special interest group. While he is also an MP in Parliament, Bob Ray has asked the Federal Ethics Commissioner if he can take on a client, namely Ontario's Indian chiefs, and to negotiate for them against the government of Ontario to fight over mining royalties. Mining royalties that those Indian bands are not entitled to under their treaties or under the Constitution. But remember, starting on April Fool's Day, Indian chiefs will have a veto over new mines in Ontario. So instead of a legal right or a constitutional right or a treaty right, let's call it a you'd better pay up or we'll blockade your road to your mine again right. Well, Bob Ray wants to get in on that action. Not on behalf of all Canadians, not even on behalf of the citizens in his own riding of Toronto Centre, where there will surely be no new mines proposed. He wants to represent a group of Indian chiefs in direct opposition as an adverse party against the government of Ontario and mining companies while sitting as an MP. It's a zero-sum game, of course. Every dollar he negotiates for his new clients will be one dollar less that goes to the government of Ontario, the people of Ontario, and, of course, those mining companies. And he wants to do this while still being an MP. Are you kidding me? Now, if you're having trouble understanding just how astoundingly corrupt this is, switch out rich Indian chiefs for another rich business group, say... The Canadian Bankers Association, of course, unlike Indian chiefs, the Canadian Bankers Association have to pay income taxes, and in their shareholders, they actually represent millions more Canadians than do Indian chiefs. Imagine if Bob Ray wanted to represent the big banks in a negotiation with the government of Ontario in terms of, I don't know, their corporate tax rate or mortgage rules or ATM fees and other banking fees, and he'd be paid by those banks, and he'd negotiate for the banks on one side of the table with the Ontario government on the other side of the table. It's crazy, all while being a Toronto MP, paid for by the people. Well, here's an even more simple comparison. Imagine if Bob Ray wanted to do the same thing he's proposing now, that mining royalties negotiation, but if he wanted to represent Canada's biggest mining companies against the government and against the Indian chiefs for big bucks. It's crazy! I mean, even Justin Trudeau, when he billed universities and schools and charities hundreds of thousands of dollars to give them speeches since becoming an MP, even he pretended that he wasn't selling his political influence. He pretended that those universities and liberal unions and corporations really thought his stories about being a substitute drama teacher were worth $20,000 a speech. But Rob Ray is more honest. He wants to sell his time, his influence, his connections, and he's clear about what his outcome is, get more money from the public and the mining companies for his clients, the Indian chiefs. Indian chiefs like, well, like Chief Teresa Spencer. Uh, uh, Rob Ray was a big fan of Teresa Spence. He met with her, he spoke to her, he really got to know her well. In January, he helped craft her list of 13 crazy time demands that she issued that she sent all the way to the United Nations. Remember that crazy list that contained the legal fiction that Indian bands were sovereign nations? that they were on the same legal and constitutional and sovereign footing as the government of Canada, that crackpot document, remember that one? I remember just absolutely scratching my head thinking, how could Bob Ray, a Rhodes Scholar, an accomplished lawyer, how could he actually sign that letter of demands too? When we saw that wacko letter to the UN, we had a Sun reporter contact Bob Ray's office to make sure it wasn't a hoax or that Teresa Spence wasn't fibbing when she claimed that Bob Ray supported it. Now Ray's office confirmed that indeed he was supporting it. I just couldn't believe it. Neither could our friend John Robson remember what he said about it. Take a look at this. You referred to clause number eight, which talks about the fact that there needs to be informed consent uh, dealing with legislation that directly affects uh, uh, inherent and treaty rights. Uh, that, that is the law today, Terry. That's not unrealistic. That is the law of Canada. That is I love not the patronizing the smile. Isn't Bob Ray a lawyer? Yeah. Didn't he look this up? Doesn't this party want to govern? Do they, do they really want to wear this thing home? Do they want to get into office and have Aboriginals show up and say, hey, well, you promised us you would fully implement this declaration and have them say, well, uh, we were lying or, sorry, we were stupid. We hadn't read it. Yeah, it seemed crazy at the time, but now it all makes sense. Bob Ray, these past months, hasn't been acting as an MP. He hasn't been acting as the Liberal leader. 
He has been setting up his position as a hired gun for a special interest group. Frankly, I'm shocked. Of all the people in Ottawa to do something like this, I never would have thought Bob Ray would be the one. I mean, seriously, Bob Ray owes Canadians an immediate and complete disclosure of how long he has been in communications with the Indian chiefs and with which chiefs about working for them on the side. Has he started being paid yet? How much money have they offered him? Is he going to be paid on commission like an ambulance chasing lawyer? Which chiefs have talked about hiring him? Were those the same chiefs he had photo ops with as the liberal leader and MP from whom he now wants to collect a fee for negotiating on their behalf? And why did we only find out about this leak now? This, through a leak from the Liberal caucus meeting. Seriously, Bob Ray did not disclose this to the public. He told it in secret to a meeting of Liberal MPs in Ottawa, and obviously one of them thought it was so unethical that they breached the confidentiality of that caucus meeting to tell a reporter. When that reporter tried to follow up with Ray directly, Ray refused comment. Now, Bob Ray has always been a left-winger. He was the NDP premier who destroyed Ontario's economy, and he's been a left-winger as the leftist leader of the federal Liberal Party, but he always had a veneer of honesty to him. I mean, his ideas might be kooky, but at least the man was honest. Now we find out he may have been secretly negotiating with Indian chiefs about wringing as much money out of mining companies in the government of Ontario as possible for his own paycheck, all the while appearing to make his Indian affairs statements in the interest of all Canadians, not just the chiefs he wants to line his pockets. I am truly shocked at this coming from Bob Ray. You know, I really don't often call for people to resign on this show. In the past two years, maybe I've said it once or twice, and of course, I would be referring to cabinet ministers I thought were disgraceful, not opposition leaders, let alone leaders of the third party. But I truly think it's necessary here. You have the leader of the third party of parliament that signed a letter containing extremist views about Indians, and now we find out that he's proposing to collect a fee for negotiating on their behalf. I'm sorry, we can't trust Bob Ray on Indian affairs anymore, or on mining, or on taxation, or even the Constitution. And of course, we must ask, what other industries has Bob Ray been thinking of taking special payments from, unbeknownst to the public? I like Bob Ray. I knew he liked to live comfortably. Who doesn't? But I never in my life imagined he'd think it's ethical to do a deal like this while he's an MP. It looks like the ethics of Canada's worst Indian chief, Theresa Spence, the one who can't account for 81% of her band's spending, the one who hired her boyfriend as the band's manager for 850 bucks a day. Well, those ethics have rubbed off on Bob Ray.